Wolf of Force, this is Captain for reporting for duty for another episode of Road Rage. I'm taking a walk right now, doing my normal walk in the morning to get myself in better shape, because shape is very important for longevity, stress reduction, and everything else. We don't want health issues, and I think staying in good shape is important. With that said, I walk around 11,000 plus steps a day. That's my game plan, plus some mild workouts in between there. Why am I talking about all this? Well, actually, this is going to be stemming right into the subject that we're doing. I want to talk about something that this community tends to need. I've been paying attention to this community, and a lot of things I hear is, well, we can't afford $25 comic book, and all these comic books that we want are expensive. And you're absolutely right. There's a cost, and then we have to budget and allow ourselves how much we can spend. But wouldn't you want to be able to get more and not feel stressed out and not have debt? Do you already have enough money? Probably not. Who doesn't want more money? Let's be honest. So let me tell you, tell you about a few things. If I'm gonna think, I've been thinking about this a lot, and it's, I've been put on my heart. I want to do this for our community. Is part of the reason people don't pay attention to finance and things is because they find it boring. But the average person spends a year on planning a wedding, a one-day event, <laughs> but yet they spend less than that t- a day on something like retirement or having their financial security. Most, a lot of divorces, breakups and things happen because finances. Finances add a lot of stress. So let me ask you, do you have enough in your rainy day fund to cover at least three months, at least three months of expenditures to keep you okay? Do you have a rainy day fund at all? Do you have debt? Do you have financial aids, student loans? Do you have credit card debt? The average person average person has $12,000 plus in credit card debt. Do you want to get rid of that? Do you have other debts outstanding? Do you want to get rid of those? This can happen to anybody. The better you plan, the better you are. Though your plans will have to be reworked. And it will not be easy. I will not lie to you. This will not be always the easiest to swallow tips. So one of the first things I want to talk about today and this video to help get that, because I'm going to be putting in tips in my videos of how to be more financially free. And who couldn't use that? So if you want, keep watching my videos. That's going to be a new thing. It won't be in everyone, but it'll be in a lot of them. Also, if you don't mind, help out this channel. If you're already financially free and in great shape, feel free to add to our Patreon or our subscribe star for as little as $1 a month. We would greatly appreciate it. But if not, and you're working at it, you can help in other ways. Leave comments below. Talk to me about this. Thumbs up. Like, subscribe, you know, hit that notification bell. Share these videos with others. I'm sure you have a family member or a friend that likes comic books or games and could use more money. So here's the thing. First thing we have to admit is we are financially fat. And what I mean by that is we're not doing the best financially. We have those debts, right? The only debt we really want to have is none. (laughs) But if you have any, your home might be your best one to have. And all the rest, hopefully, gone. But we have to realize, what is it worth to us? We have to start realizing what is essential, what makes us happy. So it means, yes, we do have to make a budget. So let's talk about why. You know, keeping up with the Joneses doesn't work. It makes us financially fat. You know, the Joneses, the neighbors next door, your family members, they're rolling up in their new car, and it looks impressive, and their nice house, and and their new watch, their new phone. But what most people don't tell you is they look wealthy, but they're usually poor. They're usually wrapped up in debt. Yes, if you roll up there in this plan and these steps, you might not look the fanciest. You might not have the fanciest jeans, hoys, and things. But guess what? You will be better off financially. And if you watch what you do today and still have a good life, you will live like no other later on. When they don't have that built, you will have it. You will feel comfortable. Wouldn't you like to have enough money put away to not have to worry if your car breaks down or if that new comic book that comes out that has a variant cover and you really want it, guess what? You can get it. You don't have to worry about being too far in debt or not having enough money and blowing your budget. So that's the first thing we have to realize is where we are now is not where we want to be. I challenge you. Do a 30-day checkup. Start today. Or start on the first of the month, whatever. Use some form, paper, pen. Use your phone to catalog. Every time you spend any money, write it down. Do that for one month. Every expenditure, no matter how small. At the end of the month, review those expenditures. Look where your monies went. 
most people can cut their budget by as much as 10% with barely leaving feeling it by just watching what they spent their money on. Now think about that, freeing up that kind of money to get you in a better situation. Maybe you can get that bill knocked off. And we'll talk about getting those bills paid and paid fast later. Okay, so that's what we want to work on. Let's find out where our money's going. Number two, if you think you haven't done bad, I challenge you to do this. This is a rough challenge, easy really mathematically. Just look at the jobs that you've worked at, how much you made at those jobs how, and for how many years, and do a rough estimation of how much you've earned in your life up to this period in time. Look, and then when you do that, look at all that money you've spent that's went through your fingers and look around. Do you have debt? Look at what your money has bought you. Are you really happy with what you've done? I'm going to be honest with you. The answer for most of us will be no. answer for me is no. <laughs> we make mistakes. We plan. And no matter how much we plan, we can't plan for everything. Bad things are going to hurt, but the better you planned, the better off you are. Don't go, oh, but Captain Frugal, you don't understand. You grew up great. No, I grew up poor. Five of us in a one-bedroom apartment sharing two single beds. Yeah, really great to bring a date home and say, oh, this is my mom's bed and my bed. We share it together. <laughs> no, not cool at all. And I'm not picking on my parents, because, and I'm not picking on you. Most likely, and for most people, there's two problems. We were never taught about finance and how to handle our money. They don't teach this in school. We weren't taught. How do we expect to know? Or two, we were taught wrong by uncles, family members, and things to show them how to do it, but they didn't do it good themselves. How can you expect to be good when no one has shown you the way? Hmm. And don't pick on them. They didn't know any better themselves. So here's, that's one of the things. So we have to recognize we have those debts. We're not happy. The next goal then is we're going to put a plan together to start taking care of that. So that's the first thing. This first video was about acceptance. Accepting that you are not financially good. I look over my finances every month and we readjust. And usually at the end of the year, I do drastic changes if necessary, major retweaks. I need a drastic change right now. This year is one of the reasons I'm doing this video segment too. My, you know, no matter how much you plan things, you couldn't make things better. And I'd be so thankful for my planning. Otherwise, we would have been so much worse. For those of you that haven't followed my channel and don't know me very well, I had to take care of my mother's house payments and my stepfather for over eight years because my mother became very ill, bedridden ill. My stepfather stopped working to take care of her because she needed that care. Hmm. He didn't really think it through very well because they weren't ready financially for it. They weren't ready to take that burden. Do you want your burden to fall upon your kids? I paid for eight years for their house and some additional here and there when they needed it for medications and things like that when they fell behind. When my mother passed away, it was a sad time for me. I, I am very, was very close to my mother. My mother was my hero. But I will say when that happened, it helped me become more financially free because I didn't have that burden. And I would kindly have happily taken care of her for decades to come. But nonetheless, that still hurt me financially, making a whole other house payment, especially when their finances were not in order. So that was one. Then a couple of years passed, and I got myself a lot better financial shape again, built up. Get that emergency fund built and everything else. My, my daughter, unfortunately, oh, she was in the ICU for 10 days. In a traditional health care medical coverage plan, it's like an 80-20, means you're paying 20% of that cost, which is not cheap. So that hurt us a little bit, but we were prepared for it. But what we were not prepared for is my stepfather then, unfortunately, suffering major mental illness started seeing the signs and I started taking care of more and more started handling getting his finances when I took over his finances I realized just how bad his situation was he had hundreds of dollars going out each month to things that he didn't even use and didn't even need it was a large portion of redirecting and redoing things. He was paying for insurance and things that he didn't need. He had car insurance that was paying in case he was incapacitated and couldn't work. He was retired and not working. Insurance people love to sell, sell you things that you don't need, but that's another discussion of what you should have and what you shouldn't. We could talk about that in another video. 
Uh, so anyway, I took over all that, but his health, mental health continued to slip and degrade fast. He had no money put away, really, to cover all this. When it came to the point that I could no longer go and take care of him, because it was that bad, I was going over there every day, giving him his medicine, feeding him. But I had to worry all day during the day, was he going to be okay? And when I went home at night, that's a lot on a family anyway, to have to leave and go, leave your family and go take care of somebody every single day. I Yes, I did try to move him in. Mentally, he couldn't handle it. It was too stressful. It was too far gone. Well, it came to the point where the fear was too high that he would be hurt. I had calls at all times of the night. Like, hey, you have to come over there. He's went up the fire escape, and he can't get down, and he's lost. It would have been wonderful just to be able to have him go to a home where I knew they could take care of him and give him the care he needs and give him a good lifestyle. Unfortunately, he didn't have the money. So it came to the point anyway where I had to put him in a home. And yes, I know the government gives certain ways and things to do it. And yes, I should have him on Medicaid this month, relieving me of all financial burden. But during the last few months, I've had to pay over $9,000 a month for the last few months to make sure that he's taken care of. Now you think about that. I've spent over $18,000 in the last couple months to take care of somebody else. Now, I don't look at that as a woe is me. I'm not asking for money for that. But my point is this. You know, we want to take care of people we love. You can't take care of people you love if you don't have your own financial house in order. Yes, losing $18,000 plus dollars in two months hurts. Yes, absolutely. I wouldn't recommend it. But it would have been so much worse if I had no plan. And I care about my stepfather. So... That might be a kid or whatever situation we have to take care of. Wouldn't you like to be able to take care of them? We have to learn to take care of ourselves first. Otherwise, we cannot take care of others. Money does not. Money is not a root of evil, people. Money allows you to do more of what you would do. If you have more money, you can do more good things. If you have more money, you can do more bad things. It shows your character of what you really are. Wouldn't you want more money? You can buy more of those comic books. You can help support this community. You are interested. You are invested in the culture war. You want to support with your dollars the things that you enjoy and you want to support. There's a way to do that. You can support them more if you're financially free and able to do it. And my goal with some of these videos is not just to have fun. It's to help you get there too. So I hope you take this journey with me. I'm going to try to make it as painless as possible by putting it in videos that are about games and, and comic books. Just little tidbits of help here and there for the next few months, at least, to help us on our journey so that way you can be more financially free. It will not be easy. I will guarantee you that. I'm not giving you a quick, get, eat, quick, get, quick, get rich quick, I can't even say it, get rich quick or an easy out. It does not work that way. It is a mindset change. But it is something you can do that will make you live much, much more happy and stress-free. All right. Well, thank you for watching this video. Please hit like, subscribe, as I said before, notification button. Spread the word to your other family and friends that might enjoy it too as well. If you notice, these videos are not uh, monetized. I don't monetize my channel. My channel is 100% fan-funded. If you want to support it, wonderful. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you for your time, and until next time, keep it frugal.